and thou, O king, sawest and beheld a great image. This great image, whose brightness was excellent, stood before thee, and the form thereof was frightening. This image's head was of fine gold, his breast and his arms of silver, his belly and his thighs of brass, his legs of iron, his feet of part iron and part clay. Thou sawest this, till that a stone was cut out without hands, which smote the image upon his feet that were of iron and clay, and break them into pieces. Then was the iron, the clay, the brass, the silver, and the gold broken to pieces together, and became like the chaff of the summer threshing floors. And the wind carried them away that no place was found for them, and the stone that smote the image became a great mountain and filled the whole earth. This is the dream, and we will tell the interpretation thereof before the king. Thou, O king, art the king of kings. For the God of heaven hath given thee a kingdom, power, and strength, and glory. And whosoever the children of men dwell, the beasts of the field and the fowls of the heaven, hath he given into thine hand, and hath made thee ruler over them all. Thou art this head of gold. And after thee shall rise another kingdom inferior to thee, and another third kingdom of brass, which shall bear rule over all the earth. And the fourth kingdom shall be strong as iron, for as much as iron breaketh in pieces and subdueth all things, and as iron that breaketh all these, shall it break in pieces and bruise. And whereas thou sawest the feet and toes part of potter's clay and part of iron, the kingdom shall be divided, but there shall be in it of the strength of the iron, for as much as thou sawest the iron mixed with miry clay, and as the toes of the feet were part iron and part clay, so the kingdom shall be partly strong and partly broken. And whereas thou saw iron mixed with miry clay, they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men, but they shall not cleave one to another, even as iron is not mixed with clay. And in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed. And this kingdom shall not be left to another people, but it shall break into pieces and consume all these other kingdoms. And it shall stand for times indefinite, even forever. Forever, 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 forever. For as much as thou sawest that the stone was cut out of the mountain without hands, and that it break in pieces the iron, the brass, the clay, the silver, and the gold, the great God hath made known to the king what shall come to pass hereafter. And the dream is certain and the interpretation thereof sure. Then the king Nebuchadnezzar fell upon his face and worshipped Daniel 
and commanded that they should offer an oblation and sweet odours unto him. The king answered unto Daniel and said, Of a truth it is that your God is a God of gods and a Lord of kings and a revealer of secrets. Seeing thou couldst have revealed this secret, Daniel, then the king made Daniel a great man and gave him many great gifts and made him ruler over the whole province of Babylon and chief of the governors over all the wise men of Babylon. Then Daniel requested of the king and he set Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego over the affairs of the province of Babylon. But Daniel he sat in the gate of the king, that's for sure, that was him. Quite an awesome dream the king had, and so was its interpretation, for in this instance, the king of Babylon did not give a hint as to what the dream was about, and therefore you can see why he was very impressed with the interpretation that Daniel spoke, as if from the very mouth of God himself. We've been praying for millennia. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That's the whole reason we're waiting for your kingdom, Lord. Maranatha.